Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to Reaction Sports. It's your big homie, Mr. Opinion. Let's go. Wow, wow, wow. Caitlin Clark has produced the first triple-double from a rookie in WNBA history. Wow, folks. She has come really close, actually a few times to this, uh, especially with the double doubles and assists and points. We all knew that, but her getting to the grind, getting those defensive rebounds has allowed for her to produce the first triple double in WNBA history. And that is a big shout out to her and her efforts, especially against the number one team in the league. Right. And when you, you know, let's, let's call it what it is. They were able to defeat the number one team in the New York Liberty. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. She had 19 points, 13 assists, 12 rebounds, an outstanding performance from this young lady as a rookie to really keep the pressure on Angel Reese, especially as they battle out for this WNBA Rookie of the Year, right? Angel Reese has been on a hot tear as you guys all know, and Caitlin Clark has been doing quite well herself as they battle to see who will be the rookie of the year, just like they battled in college for accolades and awards and trophy, especially, you know, with them coming up on, you know, being the seventh and eighth seed, trying to make the WNBA playoffs. So it's really kudos to them for really putting in the effort and the work. All right. So, Triple doubles are great. Accolades are great. But you guys know my number one criticism of Caitlin Clark is not producing what she needs to do or doing what she needs to do to help her team win. And with that being said, I have to give credit where credit is due. In today's ball game against the number one team in the Liberty, she was able to put in the work that allowed for her team to come away with the victory. And we talk about this a lot. We talk about, you know, team sports versus individual sports. You know, it's a combination of both. You have to be able to have your accolades and you also have to be put up the numbers, right? There's a reason why Michael Jordan is considered better than Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley hasn't won anything, right? There's a reason why Magic is put in the place that he is. It's not that Charles Barkley couldn't ball, but he didn't win when it counted. He didn't win when it counted. And we have to take into consideration when you choose to play these sports, team sports, yes, your individual accolades matter, but in order to transcend and to become truly going from a great to a legend, you got to have some wins under your belt. There's a reason why Barry Sanders is the greatest running back of all time, but is not considered the greatest player of all time by many. Why is that? Doesn't have the rings. Tom Brady, he has the rings. And the rings have to count. Championships have to count. Winning have to count. Or at least is how we play the sport in America, right? Um, in terms of where we give our accolades to. So, Without further ado, I want to go into this scenario. As you can see, the score was 75-69. Indiana was down, right? Indiana was down. Three minutes left in the, in the fourth quarter. And on this play, this is what, you know, Caitlin Clark had gone, what? What was she, three for 12 from beyond the arc? I think she made, you know, three for four in the first quarter. And she really had to make anything from three all day. And what has been the criticism? You need to develop your game. You just can't be one-dimensional. When you're one-dimensional, you can be beat. You can be beat. And she was very one-dimensional. But in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, she got the ball in her hands. Coach Sides, as you can see, isolated her one-on-one. -on -one. And what did she do? Caitlin was able to take the ball to the rack, get the and one, questionable whether it was an and one, but she got it. And so what did that do? That brought the game within reach. She got three points 
without taking a 23-footer. That's huge. But this is the growth and the development that we talked about that, you know, those who were actually willing to give Caitlyn some criticism, I like the cultural warriors, who said everything she did was great. No. No. But her doing this showed me a lot today. Especially being considering this was against the number one team. Able to get this, cut the lead down, right? Next possession coming down. If you can look at your screen, this was like on a fast break, a, a 214 fast break. 214 fast break. And what Caitlin Clark did coming down the right hand side, it reminded me so much of the game against the sky. In a similar situation, she passed the ball to uh, who was the teammate? Um, I forget her name. Um, wasn't Kelsey? It was one of them. Anyways, she passed the ball. The teammate fumbled, hit the ball on top of her head, had a turnover. Nothing came of the play. But in this situation, same scenario on the break. Teammate in the corner, right? And Caitlin Clark was able to make the pass, make the right decision. Get her teammate the pass. She knocked down the three. Bam. Right? Tie ball game. Why does this matter? What is the difference in this? She made the pass. She got the ball into the hand of her player, her teammate, so she could make a play that she could do. Right? This was a, a setup three. She was able to knock it down. Her feet were square. Bang. Tie ball game. Now, Caitlin Clark was still able to make this decision to give her the ball because she was ready for it. If she would have still been going to the hole or not ready or fumbled the ball, did something crazy like that, I would expect Caitlin Clark to make a different decision in this situation. But she made the spot on right decision, knocked down Kelsey Mitchell, knocked down the three, tie ball game. That's what winning's all about. Putting your team in a position to win making the right decision in those crucial moments. Sabrina Anoscu, she had a chance to tie the game up late in the game, took a three, and missed. And missed. Huge win in front of a big crowd for the Indiana Fever, and it does do something that I've been talking about for a while, which I hope it continues, right? They had a tough, tough stretch, the Indiana Fever. A very tough stretch. In these games, they had uh, Chicago. That was a loss. We talked about that. Seattle was a uh, loss. They had the Phoenix Mercury, and they dug deep to get that win. That was a big-time win, especially with all the pressure on Clark and um, Diana Taurasi. So that was a big win. They lost against Vegas, pretty much then showed up. But Vegas, Kelsey um, and Plum showed up big time for Vegas. And then they got the win against the number one team, New York. Big time shocking, right? So that was how they, you know, finished this little run out. And I think... And I th I give them props for that. Be honest with you. Big time props. And the reason why is as the number one player, this is this shows me a sign of growth and development. We'll see if they could keep this momentum going forward, take this momentum into the game against Washington, which they should be, beat the Mercury again, and then they'll have a big time matchup against the Minnesota Lynx. And that'll be another tough stretch they have coming down. But let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, especially as they battle for this playoff spot. And also, at the same time, Caitlin Clark is battling for Rookie of the Year. All right. So, once again, let's look at this. Let's look at some stats really quick before we get out of here. Caitlin Clark had 7 of 17, 3 of 12 from beyond the arc. You know why I'm not even mad about that? Because she made the plays at the end of the game to win. Four turnovers. You know that's been a big issue for her. Four turnovers. But she was plus nine today. She's one of the, lead, the league leaders in um, plus minus with negative, what, 
a hundred and something. So this was big time from her. Big time from the team. A big, big victory. You got to give credit to them. You got to give credit to Coach Sides. And we'll see what they do. They're firmly in the battle for a playoff spot. Right? Firmly in the battle for a playoff spot. As you can see, they're just trailing the Chicago Sky. And they're not far from Phoenix. The top eight teams in the WNBA make the playoffs. And they also play in the dream coming up. So let me know what you guys think. Historic moment for Caitlin Clark. She was able to record a triple-double. Get a big, big needed win over the top team in the league so far this year. And we'll see what happens from there. Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to like, 